Let's talk about the flattened data type. Now, in earlier lessons, we covered how to apply mappings for specific fields in Elasticsearch. Up to this point, we've only handled short documents with only a few associated fields. However, if we need to handle documents with many inner fields, Elasticsearch's performance can start to suffer. This is because each subfield gets mapped to individual fields by default with dynamic mappings. To avoid reaching what we call a mapping explosion, Elasticsearch offers the flattened data type to avoid mapping every subfield as individual fields, but rather as one flattened field containing the original data. Let's start with an example using syslog, which is in JSON format. Now in this example, fields like file set, process, and host are top level fields, which contain inner fields inside of them. Depending on the system and the process sending the log, the number of fields contained in these top level fields can change. For example, after sending this first log, another syslog log gets ingested a few minutes later, containing additional inner fields for the host field. As time passes, the host field can accumulate an unpredictable number of inner fields with unknown data types. Elasticsearch's default behavior is to map all inner fields as individual fields. Let's see how this works hands-on. Okay, so I've signed into my Elasticsearch instance here already, and there's gonna be some pretty long commands in this exercise, so to help you out a little bit, I've actually uploaded the text of these commands to a website for you. If you just go to media.sundog-soft.com slash es slash flattened.txt, you'll see all the commands that we're gonna enter throughout this activity in this lecture. So you can just copy and paste them to make life a little bit easier. So to understand this better, let's index a sample document in an index named demo-default with the following curl request. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this from my document off to the side here. If you just uh, right click inside of Putty on Windows, that will paste in what you've copied to the clipboard. And we can see that we're importing a pretty big document here, or at least a complicated one. And it has a bunch of different inner fields and these fields could actually change and expand over time. So we're right to be worried about a field mapping explosion. Let's hit enter and put that in there. All right, now let's see what mappings were created automatically by Elasticsearch for the demo-default index. To do that, you can copy and paste, but I'm just gonna type it in to make it more clear. We can say curl-x get, double quote HTTP, 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash demo dash default is our index that we created slash underscore mapping question mark pretty equals true double quote so the request retrieves the mapping for a demo dash default let's take a look at the host area here so let's examine the fields and mapping auto assigned by Elasticsearch especially this host fields mapping here, we have not defined any mapping for the demo-default index, but we can see that Elasticsearch was smart enough to assign types for each of the fields. In this lesson, we'll learn about the flattened data types in Elasticsearch, which is designed to handle the use case of unknown or large numbers of inner fields occurring in a document. Now, you might be asking yourself, what's wrong with documents that contain many fields? Well, the answer is they can cause your Elasticsearch cluster to go down. Each field has an associated mapping type in its index. These types can be specified by the user, or Elasticsearch can automatically assign this to the field. Elasticsearch holds the mapping information of every index in its cluster state. The cluster state includes information such as index mappings, the node details, etc. Now we can retrieve the current cluster state in our example by using the cluster state API, like so. Let's type this in curl x get quote http 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash underscore cluster slash state and with pretty equals true. And we're gonna dump this out to a file called es-cluster-state.json because it's big. Let's go ahead and run that. All right, so this request stored the cluster state to a file named es-cluster-state.json. So we can open this file in your favorite editor. Let's uh, use nano, that's one that I like nano es-cluster-state.json. And now if we search for demo-default, we can find this section that we're interested in because this file is massive. Look at that, 5,163 lines. So let's say uh, control W, demo-default, and there we have it. So that takes you to this mapping section of the file. And here in the cluster state, you can see the index demo-default, which we created under the object called indices. 
Also, you'll see the information specific to the index demo dash default, like its mappings and its settings here. Now, the important thing to know is that in most cases, especially in log management scenarios, Elasticsearch is typically set up as a cluster. A cluster is a collection of Elasticsearch nodes. The presence of multiple nodes allows Elasticsearch to perform better indexing and searching operations. We'll learn more about clusters in the upcoming lessons, but the important thing to know here is that the cluster state is passed between the nodes so that clusters run smoothly. Within this cluster, there will be a master node that sends the latest cluster state to all the other nodes. Upon receiving the cluster state, the node send an acknowledgement signal back to the master node. For each new field added to the document, a new mapping is created by Elasticsearch. For each new mapping update of the index, the cluster state also changes. After each cluster state change, the other nodes need to be synced. Frequently adding new fields to an index not only causes the cluster state to grow, but also triggers cluster state updates across all nodes, which can result in delays if pushed far enough. And without the updated cluster state, nodes aren't able to perform basic operations like indexing and searching. This can cause memory issues within the nodes and result in poor performance and possibly lead to the cluster itself going down. When an Elasticsearch cluster crashes because of too many fields in a map, we call this a mapping explosion. This is especially true in environments that handle heavy loads or don't have enough hardware to power it. In order to help prevent mapping explosions, Elasticsearch introduced the flattened data type. Essentially, what this data type does is map the entire object, along with its inner fields, into a single field. In other words, if a field contains inner fields, the flattened data type maps the parent field as a single type named flattened, and the inner fields don't appear in the mappings at all, thereby reducing the total mapped fields. Let's see the flattened type in action to better understand. To do this, let's index the same log document as before, but under a new index. Let's start by getting out of our nano editor here. I'll just say uh, control X. And let's start by creating a new index named demo-flattened with curl-x put, http 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash demo-flattened. All right. Now, since we know the field host is going to grow with inner fields, let's predefine its mapping as flattened. And I'm going to copy and paste this from uh, my document off to the side here. So you can see what we're doing there. We're just saying uh, we're going to create a mapping with the following structure. We're going to define properties where the host has a type of flattened. Pretty straightforward. All right, that went through. So now after this, we can index the log document like so. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste this from my cheat sheet. The only difference is really that we're putting it into the demo-flattened index this time. So it's going to use that flattened mapping type. So again, in this document, you can see that the field host contains inner fields. But with the assignment of flattened, the host field mapping will no longer show its inner fields. So let's check this by getting the mapping of the index demo-flattened. curl-xget, http 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash demo-flattened, underscore mapping, uh, pretty equals true. So that request resulted in this response. Let's go up and uh, look for the host field type here again. There it is. Now you can see that the process field contains inner fields and their types listed in the mapping. This is because we didn't map it as a flattened data type. So now let's see what happens when new inner fields are added to the host field. We'll add some inner fields to the host field with this curl request. Again, I'm just copying this from off to the side. And we're going to add a new host OS version and OS architecture here. So let's verify that the document was updated with those new inner fields to the host field with this request, curl-xget, http 127.0.0.1.9200 slash demo-flattened underscore doc slash one, question mark, pretty equals true. And in this response, we can see the new fields that we added to the document down here at the bottom. We have the OS version and the OS architecture that weren't there before. So now let's check how the new fields change the mappings. We'll say curl-xget, HTTP 
127.0.0.1 colon i200 slash demo dash flattened slash underscore mappings pretty equals true. And as we intended, the newly added inner fields have not been mapped. They're not in here at all. Now this is an important feature for many real world scenarios as this reduces the size of the mapping significantly and therefore mitigates the risk of a mapping explosion. So, so far we have seen why and how the flattened data type is used. However, there are certain limitations to be aware of when using the flattened data type to mapping. The main limitation with using the flattened data type is the fields of the flattened data type object will be treated as keywords. In Elasticsearch, this means no analyzers and tokenizers will be applied to the flattened fields, and this results in a more limited search capability. Let's experience this firsthand. As an example, let's query the host field for the text bionic beaver using an exact match. You can see here we're just doing a search query on the demo flattened index with a match query for bionic beaver with capital B's. As we can see, the matching document and the OS version inner field had the matching text as in the response shown here. This is because the search query we provided was an exact match, including the case of the capital B's in bionic and beaver. This means that even if we search the outer field, all inner objects are searched for using the search keyword. Now, what if we wanted to search on a specific inner object? Elasticsearch allows that too by using the dot notation. Let's say we need to search for a bionic beaver contained in the OS version field, which itself is nested inside the host field. In this case, we can modify our query so that the field we're searching for is host.os version, like so. Host.os version, bionic beaver. Let's go ahead and kick that off. So for this query too, you can see that the document was matched as it contains the field OS version with the value bionic beaver. Okay, that went smoothly, but now let's see what happens when we look for a partial match using just beaver in the field OS version. No results are returned. The partial match doesn't return any results in this case because the fields are not analyzed. This is one consideration to keep in mind when choosing the flattened data type. Here's a quick summary of the different scenarios of searching with the match query. You can see here that the match query has to be exact. It has to be bionic beaver with capital B's, otherwise you don't get a result back. That's because Elasticsearch stores the flattened data type values as keywords. So queries involving any numerical calculations or full text matching cannot be applied to the flattened fields or their inner fields. So here's a list of the supported queries for the flattened data type. You can do term, terms and term set, prefix, range, match and multi-match, query string, simple query string, or exists. Another consideration to keep in mind when choosing the flattened data type is that Elasticsearch's results highlighting feature won't be enabled for those fields. These highlighted snippets and search results help show the users where the query matches are. This is achieved using analysis, but if we use a flattened data type, it won't get analyzed, so the requirements need to fit this limitation. In summary, even though using the flattened data type restricts a field search and highlighting capability, it arms us with an effective option to handle cases where there could otherwise be a large number of field mappings and avoid mapping explosions.